Early this morning, Eastern Time, the Polaris Dawn crew and the SpaceX team made history by having the first commercial EVA, the first commercial spacewalk ever. Was that act illegal? Jared Isaacman and Sarah Gillis exited their vehicle, at least partially, exited the Crew Dragon, tested out the EVA procedures, tested out their brand new spacesuits that SpaceX developed without a NASA contract, by the way, got a beautiful view of Earth from space, and as far as we know, everything went really well. Does the Polaris Dawn mission breach the Outer Space Treaty? That is a claim being made by a lawyer in the Netherlands, and spoiler alert, absolutely not. No, Polaris Dawn is not illegal in any sense of the word, and we're going to go into why. We're going to discuss the Outer Space Treaty and how it applies to commercial missions like Polaris Dawn, like Inspiration4, like the other Polaris program missions and FRAM2 and any other private missions that might be happening in the future. How does it all fit into the 1967 Outer Space Treaty? And what of the claims that this is no big deal, this EVA is no big deal because governments have been doing EVAs for decades? Well, that's a bust too, and I will tell you why. I'm Laura Forsick. I'm the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical. I am not a lawyer, so I'm going to quote a lawyer. This country has the opportunity to interpret the Outer Space Treaty in two ways, as conducive to private activity or so that it creates barriers. A close reading of the text shows that the treaty actually allows a lighter regulatory hand than many claim, both in terms of authorization and supervision requirements of Article 6. Those were words by lawyer Laura Montgomery. She has written extensively about Article 6 of the Outer Space Treaty, which I will get into in a moment. But that is the issue here, is that when the Outer Space Treaty was written and signed, there were no private entities that were involved outside of governments. It was entirely government-led, as it has been, as space has been for decades now. We are entering a new era of commercial space flight that is outside of government missions. And this apparently scares some people because some people believe that private missions in space should be heavily regulated, such as Tommaso Segoba, and I apologize if I mispronounce your name. He's the executive director of the International Association for the Advancement of Space Safety in the Netherlands. He gave an interview with Al Jazeera English today in which he said that the Polaris Dawn mission, and specifically talking about the spacewalk, was illegal. And that's his word, illegal. This is a mission which violates Article 6 of the Outer Space Treaty, he told Al Jazeera. But does it? You will not find a lawyer in the United States that agrees with that statement because it is not true under U.S. law. There is no law in the U.S. books that Polaris Dawn has broken or intends to break. And in fact, this was made purposely so because for 20 years, since 2004, Congress has put a moratorium on the FAA, that's the Federal Aviation Administration, issuing any kind of laws or regulations regarding spaceflight participants and crew of commercial spaceflight. And this has been quite the ongoing debate, not as strongly this year as the previous years, but this moratorium is set to currently expire in January and is likely to be extended. Because even though there are some people who believe that we have learned all we need to learn over the past 20 years with commercial human spaceflight, there are others who believe that commercial human spaceflight has been so limited that we really haven't had the ability to learn what we need to learn to know what to regulate and what laws to put in place when it comes to the safety of the people on board. Remember, currently the FAA only regulates spaceflight, commercial spaceflight, in terms of the uninvolved public, people on the ground. The passengers and crew on board are under informed consent. So as long as they sign a waiver, as long as they are told all the dangers of spaceflight and whatever mission they intend to do, then that is enough for the legal system in the United States currently. And that is what this lawyer in the Netherlands has an issue with. He believes that the Outer Space Treaty trumps the laws that Congress have put in place. In congressional testimony in 2017, Laura Montgomery wrote, I respectfully recommend that the United States not regulate new commercial space activities such as lunar habitats, mining, satellite servicing, or lunar beer brewing for the wrong reasons. Before I read on, I want to talk to you about what the Article 6 of the Outer Space Treaty is. State parties to the treaty shall bear international responsibility for national activities in outer space, including the moon and other celestial bodies. Whether such activities are carried out by governmental agencies or by non-governmental entities, and for assuring that national activities are carried out in conformity with the provisions set forth in the present treaty. The activities of non-governmental entities in outer space, including the moon and other celestial bodies, shall require authorization and continuing supervision by the appropriate state party to the treaty. And this has been open to interpretation for decades. What does authorization and continuing supervision mean? 
And does that mean, as I think Laura Montgomery has pointed out a few times you know, humorously, does that mean that the government needs to regulate how commercial astronauts brush their teeth? Anything that the commercial industry or commercial private astronauts do in space. Continuing to read Laura Montgomery's testimony, she said, The treaty does not forbid private operators from operating in outer space. It does not say that either all or any particular activity must be authorized, leaving decisions regarding what activities require regulation to the member states. And finally, Article 6 is not, under U.S. law, self-executing, which means that it does not create an obligation or a prohibition on the private sector unless Congress says it does. And I know Lara has written extensively about this subject, and as I'm sure other lawyers in the United States and around the world have. And basically, it is an interpretation by U.S. Congress as to how to interpret the Outer Space Treaty. And at this time, U.S. Congress, U.S. law has interpreted the Outer Space Treaty to say that unless commercial actors are violating the Outer Space Treaty in any other way or doing anything illegal under U.S. law, then they are not breaching the Outer Space Treaty. Furthermore, I, again, I'm not a lawyer, but I do not believe a breach of a treaty is actually illegal. So not only is Polaris Dawn not operating illegally under U.S. law as a U.S. entity, it is also not acting illegally under international law. Whether or not it has breached the Outer Space Treaty is up to interpretation, and U.S. law and pretty much all U.S. lawyers would agree that this is not the case. In the Al Jazeera English article, and by the way, I'm linking all of these articles and texts below, they did say, several experts say that the U.S. is in no danger of violating the Outer Space Treaty. They quote Ram Jakku, and again, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing her name. He is the former director of the Institute of Air and Space Law at McGill University. They quote him as saying, there exists no internationally binding regulations that provide precise definition of this term and no international technical standards and procedure for effectively implementing this obligation. And by this term, he meant supervision. And while I don't expect a non-space beat journalist to get everything correct, Al Jazeera English does say that Polaris Dawn was not regulated under US law, which is not true. It was regulated by the FAA, which grants launch and reentry licenses, and it was regulated by the FCC, which regulates broadcasting from space. And I'm not sure about this, but it was probably regulated under NOAA as well, because that regulates imaging from space. And we certainly saw some beautiful images from space this morning during the EVA. So it is not at all true to say that commercial spaceflight is not regulated in the United States. But what is true is that these regulations are under debate. And there's still a big question as to how much and in what ways commercial spaceflight, human spaceflight, should be regulated by U.S. Congress, by U.S. law. And full disclosure, I was actually on Al Jazeera English TV just two days ago, where they were really grilling me about the risk of the EVA on Polaris Dawn. And I was trying to explain to them that this is, yes, it's risky, but it's not overly risky. And here is why people, private individuals, are risking their lives to test this technology, to test these procedures. So I have a feeling that there's a little bit of an angle that Al Jazeera is trying to push here in this story. I will link that TV interview below. It's really brief. So on the one side, you have the mentality that commercial companies, commercial private astronauts need to be highly regulated by government because they can't be trusted. And on the other hand, you have people saying, so what that a commercial company and private individuals have done this, been there, done that for decades. This is nothing new. An EVA is nothing new. I remember that mentality popping up in 2021 when Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin had their first human missions to suborbital space. And I remember hearing from some people not in the space community, why is this a big deal? Governments proved suborbital human spaceflight a long time ago. The reason why anything that the commercial space industry does that governments have already done is because the commercial space industry operates differently. It needs to operate efficiently as well as safely. It needs to be quick, but not so quick that it risks the lives of its customers. It needs to have a profit eventually. And it wants to open it up to a mass scale. Governments have no real incentive to open up their astronaut cores, their government astronaut cores to large numbers of people, but private companies want to open up their customer base. So they want to have not just two people, Jared Isaacman and Sarah Gillis, do an EVA for a few minutes. They want to open it up so that more and more and more people can do missions like Polaris Dawn, can do missions like Inspiration4, can do other commercial missions. I was just talking in my video yesterday, which you can watch here linked above, about how 
wealthy individuals, private individuals are opening up space flight in cooperation, in partnership with commercial companies for the masses, for more people to follow them. And that is why this makes a difference. This is why the Polaris Dawn spacewalk is so fundamentally different from government spacewalks, because it was commercially run, because it was commercially operated, because it's commercial technology, and because it's intending to open up similar activities to large numbers of people safely and profitably. This is just the start, because whether or not the moratorium on commercial human spaceflight regulation is extended or expires in January of 2025, we need to discuss what happens next. What regulations will the FDA or any other government body put in place on commercial spaceflight? And what are the U.S. obligations under the Outer Space Treaty? Rather than thinking about this black and white, this is allowed, this isn't, this is illegal, this is legal, think about it in terms of modernization and interpretation. How do we take the 1967 Outer Space Treaty and apply it to the 21st century? Apply it not just to 2024, but to all of the decades that will come after. Because we are just getting the ball rolling here. This is just the beginning.